So let's look at the unit circle again, and now we're going to define it in terms of sine, cosine, and tangent. So I'm going to try to draw you then what this unit circle actually looks like here. So we've got, we've actually got a unit circle we could draw. Um, and how does that look? The unit circle looks like, well, it's a big giant circle, right? It's a big giant thing like this and like this. Oh, that's not a very nice straight line, is it? And I've got a nice big circle. I don't know how that looks. Ah, oh, it looks okay. So this right here, I'm still going to draw my x-axis and my y-axis. And on this circle now, I can draw any angle I want. I can draw some angle that goes out to some random point like this, like some, some angle like this. This here would be theta, remember? This is a theta here. Uh, maybe I should make that more clear. There we go, so this is an angle theta. And if we go up by this angle, then this is what's really interesting about it, is I can actually define then this value and this value. It turns out that your x value here and your y value here, these are defined really cool because the x is actually known as, this is actually how they're defined, we can actually say this is cos theta. It turns out the cosine of theta, that's related to this, and your y value, that's sine theta. So we've got then this thing right here going on. We've got y is sine and x is cos. This is the key thing. This is how we define them. So in other words, this right here, we've got our y here. In other words, this is, this is sine theta here. So we actually define our y value by the sine theta. And the x value here is given by cos theta. Now, how do you remember which is which? This is really lame, but I think that y ever so slightly rhymes with sine. I mean, at least it has an i sound in it. So sine rhymes with y, so that's why y is the one that's the sine. Uh, maybe that doesn't work for you. That's just fine, but this is at least how I like to do it. So you can see then that this is really useful for us. If our radius is 1, um, then we can actually do a lot of neat things with it, right? We can actually then say, okay, well, then we know what, what to do. If we know that this value is right here, and I say, what's its x value over here? Well, I would just say, oh, whatever the cosine of this angle is, that's the x value. That's because there's a 1 in front. It turns out it all comes from this Soka Toa business with right angle triangles. If you just make your uh, radius here 1, uh, it turns out that's where it all comes from. Because it turns out uh, if you do, you know, cosine is adjacent over uh, hypotenuse, and the adjacent of this is this one, that's the x, and you'd have to divide that by 1, but that's why you don't do anything special. So that's why we define it as x is cos theta, we define it as y is sine theta. These are the important ones here. This is what we need. Um, so if we do that, that's really, really important. We'll put stars by that one. This is how we define them. And then we can actually do some stuff with them. So what about tangent? Because I told you here we're going to talk about sine, cos, and tangent. We've got sine, we've got cos. How do we deal with tangent? Well, that one we can actually deal with. Um, it's a little bit weirder, but that's okay. Whoops. I want to make it, maybe I'll make it blue or black. Actually, I'll make it black. So what if we've got, again, another unit circle. We've got x and y. And I draw myself another circle, of course, going across like this. And this time I draw myself again some sort of value here. So I draw I draw something going this way. Well, it turns out we define the tangent. We say that tan of theta, and by the way, this right here is my angle theta here, like this. So we define tan theta as sine theta over cos theta. This is just an absolute definition. This is this is a definition we use. So again, I'm going to go to my little thing right here and put some stars by this. This is the other definition we needed. So we know that the tangent is going to be given by the sine over the cos. Now, what I like about this is that you can maybe see it in a slightly different way. Uh, now, I hope I don't confuse you here, but I just think it's kind of beautiful how this works. Is what if I took this and I make this right here like a straight line? You know, I just take, what's the equation of a straight line? Let's just say I looked at that. Do you remember how the equation of a straight line goes? It goes y equals mx plus b, or plus c, depending on what you're looking at, where m is the slope or the gradient, and b is your y-intercept. Well, in this case, it has no y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is 0, so that just cancels out. So look at this, then. If we defined it as this, we could say, then, that think carefully about how you find a slope. A slope isn't that always by doing these things over these things. This is like y over x. Isn't that how you do a slope? Delta y over delta x, or rise over run. Well, remember, y, though, is defined as sine, and the x here is defined as cos. 
So we could actually rewrite this as y equals, now bear with me, we've got an x here, and in front of it, we've actually got sine theta, because this, uh, this is how you do your slope, right? You do delta y over delta x. This is how you do it. This is how you do mx. But I know that delta y over delta x is actually defined as sine theta over cos theta, which is 10. So I could say then, this is, seems really weird, but you can actually say that y equals tan theta times x. That's just sort of, at least that's how you do the equation of a straight line. You can use tangent. Now if that confuses you, no problem. Just stick with this, that tan theta is sine over cos. There you go. Uh, now comes an awesome, awesome, awesome joke. So let's look at this. This is sine b over tan b. Uh, now... <laughs> I don't know if you know who this is. This is this is Bill Cosby. So this is cos b. I just want to show you why that's awesome, because of course you can work it out if you know what sine b is. Now we just learned that tangent is sine over cos. So that means instead of tangent down here, I put in sine b over cos of b. Now when you divide by a fraction, you can say it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that means I can multiply by cos b over sine b. And the sine b's cancel out, so I get cos b. And of course, his name is Bill Cosby. Ha 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 ha. I actually really like that one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing like an idiot, but I think it's awesome. I think it's a really good one. Sine b over tan b is Cosby. Ha ha. All right, so, um, of course, you could have also just seen it as how we define tangent, but oh well. Let's look at this. So let's do some simple or relatively simple examples. They're not super simple, but we'll start with some of these. Uh, so let's do if theta is 0 or pi or pi over 2 or some multiples of those, we can actually already figure out these exact values. We can actually do these. So let's do the exact value of sine of pi over 2. So uh, what really helps to do these, it really helps to actually start by just drawing it and see if you can figure it out. This is a unit circle, so we've got to draw an angle of pi over 2. And if you remember, this is 0, this is 2 pi, and over here this is pi. Remember, these are radians. So if you go from here and you go around, remember it always starts off to the right, and then you've got to look at how far you've gone around. So if you go around pi over 2, if this whole thing is pi, pi over 2 is half of that, so that's straight up. That's this. So now I know where I'm sitting here. This right here is this. Now, how does this help me to actually get the exact values? Well, this does because I know that these values right here, this is negative 1, this is negative 1. Because sine tells you, or sine uh, tells you the y value. So really, I'm looking at what's the y value here? So when you're actually right here, this is the angle we're looking at here. What's the y value right here? Well, the y value is 1, isn't it? So you can say then that sine of pi over 2 equals 1. There you go. There's the answer. We can do another example as well. So if we take a look here, we, have, uh, we want the exact value of cos of minus 5 pi over 2. So again, it helps to draw it. So let's just first of all draw where we are. This is 0 and 2 pi. This is pi. And an angle of minus 5 pi over 2, minus, remember, that means it goes opposite 2. So instead of going in this direction, it's going to go this direction, that's all. So it's going to go clockwise this time. And the fact that it's uh, something pi over 2, then it helps to know sort of that this way here, if we go down this way, then this is going to be pi over 2 radians. This is 2 pi over 2, so this is 3 pi over 2. So this is 4 pi over 2, so this must be 5 pi over 2. So we actually go all the way around and then once more. So let's draw maybe in red where we finish. We actually finish here. This is where our angle is. We've gone all the way around. So we've gone here, we've gone all the way around, and we've finished here. And because of that, then, we can look at what this is. Now, we, we want to know the cos. And remember, cos is the x value. So if we want the x value, then that's really easy. What's the x value here? The x value is 0. So therefore, we can say then that the cos of minus 5 pi over 2 equals zero. Had they asked for the sine, then the sine would be negative one. Because can you see right here, we're actually sitting at one, this is at one, this is at one, negative one, and this is at y equals negative one. So you see, if they asked for their y value, that would have been negative one. So if they wanted sine of this, it would be negative one. But cos is this. Let's do one more even. So we have to calculate the exact value of sine seven pi over two. Again, Draw 0, draw the 2 pi, and draw the pi here. This is how things go. It's a positive angle, so we're going around this way. 
and we can just start counting by pi over 2. So remember, this is 1 pi over 2 here. So we go 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5, 6, 7 pi over 2. So this is going to be 7 pi over 2. We've gone all the way around once and then around again. So we finish down here. Just like in the last one. Do you notice in the last one we actually finished here? Well, same thing here. Here we've gone around this way. And then all the way around like that we finished here. That's sort of what we've done here. We've gone all the way around once and then around again another three quarters. But all that matters is where you finish because that's where your angle sort of finishes here. And because of this, we want sine. Sine is the y value, remember? We learned that that's right. The sine is the y value, x is the cos. So because of that, since we want the y value, then we say, well, fine, then this is really easy. Sine of 7 pi over 2 must be the y value here. And in this case, remember, this is negative 1. This is x equals negative 1. This is y equals 1. This is x equals 1. So because of this, then, this is the y value right here is negative 1. So that means the answer here, then, is negative 1. So that's how we do what are considered the easy ones. And the reason why I say they're easy, they're not necessarily easy unless you know what to do, but I say easy because we're doing either 0 or pi or pi over 2. In other words, we're always either to the right or up or left or down. It comes harder when you start doing things in the middle here. So that's why anything that's sort of right, up, left, or down, those are fairly straightforward because the answers are either 1 or 0 or negative 1. So that's all you get from these ones. But now uh, in the next videos, we're going to learn how to actually deal with the more complicated ones. But for those, we're going to need something called special triangles, and we're going to need to know about quadrants.